The change of a season is a moment in time to reach outdoors and bring that beauty onto our page. And just as I did with this autumn junk journal last year, we can use the seasonal colours to inspire our designs. This week's video is a step-by-step -step process, creating a page using springtime in England to shape the design. I hope to inspire your junk journal passion, your love of paper and your desire to create beautiful art journal spreads. And if you do have that passion for paper like me, then hit the subscribe button and ring the little notification bell because I have many more videos and ideas to come. I'm using the same journal as last week. You can just see the little cactus doodle in the bottom left hand of that page there. I've decided on the page that I'm going to use. But first, I just want to show you the beautiful book that I'm going to be using. A Victorian flower album by Henry Terry. It's a collection of the most gloriously beautiful hand-painted flowers. If you'd like to see a longer page turn of this, then I do have a video on it, so I'll leave a link in the description box down below. I've actually been hoarding this one since I bought it last year. I do find it really difficult to use my most beautiful supplies and if you're the same then please do let me know, drop me a comment down below. So I finally commit to a page to use and here I'm just using my hands to tear the page rather than use a pair of scissors to get a more interesting edge. And I just position it on the journal page to get a feel for the size of it. I've pulled a few other goodies from my stash and this is a vintage book page. I use old book pages an awful lot in my crafting. I've chosen an old book page that looks aged and yellowing and I decide to just put that behind the flower to lift the colour of the page because it's very black at the moment on the left hand side. And here I'm just using my liquid glue in relatively sparing quantities. And that will work nicely to give some layering to the page and give the flower something to sit on. You can see from the back of the page that either side would have been useful for a picture. So I attach the flower to the page and I use some of the black page behind it as a border. And now I want to add a couple more embellishments. So I have a piece of brown cardstock and a little pocket that I've made. The brown cardstock underneath is actually the inside of a roll of wrapping paper and that little, little pocket I made a couple of weeks ago. I have a stash of them and I've just pulled out one that suits in terms of size and colour. So I don't want to cover up too much of the picture, the flower, but I want to create a layering effect, so I just have a little play about where to position the pocket and a little piece of cardstock. That pocket is actually made from an old Spanish encyclopedia. So I want to add some colour to the right hand side, to that lovely music paper. I'm just putting a little bit of a wash of yellow and pale greens that marry up with the flower on the left hand side. And really I'm just playing around with the colours in my little White Knights palette. I'm just trying to pick out colours that I recall from the new growth from the flowers that I see when I go for a walk outside. And now for the fun bit. This week I'm having a go at a doodle of a daffodil. And you can see an example of one that I've done earlier just on the table here. I've decided to use scrapbook paper, so it's just a little piece of squared scrapbook paper. I just think the finished article is a bit more interesting when you have some pattern behind the doodle. So I'm drawing the front of the flower and I think it has about five leaves. And I'm just pointing the flower down so that it's got a little bit of positioning on the page. 
And here I'm just mixing a bit of colour to paint, first of all the stalk and the back of the flower and then I move on with the yellows and oranges to the petals. You don't have to be particularly skilled to have a go at some of these doodles. I'll put the name of the book that I use that helps me in the description box down below and actually it'd be great to hear if you've been doing any doodling since last week and whether you have any books that you particularly recommend we should use. I want to add something extra to the page so I'm using one of these mini size envelopes that I've been making. They're really easy to make and if you're interested I do have a video so I will also leave a link in the description box down below to the video. As you can see the main body of the envelope is actually white paper. So again it's an old book and I've just used my scraps of pattern paper and other little bits of washi and a stamp to decorate the front. And I want to create a kind of fold out with this so as you can see I'm just positioning it on the back of the right hand side page. The waistcoat that you can see on the front of the envelope is actually a stamp so it's an acrylic stamp and again I've just painted that with watercolour paints. The joy of that liquid glue is that you can slightly reposition anything for a couple of minutes before it dries. So I think we're making progress. We've got colour on the right hand side and a place to put the little daffodil as a pocket. I think it deserves a rounded corner and here I'm just adding some faux stitching just to give it a little bit of a border. And of course the glue goes down just two sides of the square. And now we have a cute little pocket with our hand drawn and painted doodle. I said in last week's video that I really like bringing text and the handwritten word into a journal page. So in this week's spread I'm using the Oxford Dictionary of Quotations and I found just a little four line verse from Tennyson that relates to spring. Behold, we know not anything, I can but trust that good shall fall. At last far off, at last to all, and every winter changed to spring. Basically what this gives me is a little journaling card to tuck behind the little daffodil. I've made myself a little tag in complementary colours and this is also decorated with some music paper. I took that in behind the daffodil and here's our little quote. And I don't feel quite finished until I've added just a few little sequins, again in green to go with the page and just a touch of red. I'm using the same glue and I'm just spreading them around the pages so that they act as a bit of a focal point to take the eye to the outer extremities so that it encourages you to look to the top left and then to the bottom right. And this time I've found my tweezers so I just use them to position the sequins where I want them.
and here we have our finished spread springtime in England. I really hope that you've enjoyed this step-by-step -step journaling process today. If you have enjoyed it, then hit the subscribe button and ring the little notification bell and come back next week because we'll be doing more doodling and more journaling. Bye.